Hey everyone, Aquaman here with Water Wisdom, sponsored by WaterFilters.net. Today I have a special guest with us from Rusco. This is Brad Anderson. Brad, thanks for being with us today. You're welcome. Brad, the Rusco product line is a really great sediment filter line that I want our clients and viewers to know about. Um, tell me about the Rusco system. What is it? What do I use it for? Why do I need one? Rusco is designed for sand, sediment, and hard scale. Stuff you can physically see with the naked eye that's going to settle out in about 10 seconds. Okay, so if I've got cloudy water, if I've got really fine silt, then this isn't for me. No, uh, that you want to do with a backwashing sediment filter. This is for the, the bigger chunks that are out there. Okay, so something I can physically see or feel the particle size. Correct. Okay, now what are some common applications that these are used for? For example, am I going to use this on well water or city water or, or both or what? Um, use it on both. I mean, I would put it on every well application, especially if you've got a steel casing. Uh, you've got sediment that uh, scale comes off the casing that's going to get into the house, cause problems with the aerators, the water softener, the washing machine. Uh, city water mains, this time of year when they're flushing the water mains out, you're going to get sediment coming into the house that you don't realize. Um, there's basically unlimited applications on these. And there's a lot of people out there watching who don't realize how much sediment is really in city water, right? Definitely. Yeah. If you put one of these in, you'll be amazed at what you catch in the filter. Yeah, this is true of myself. I have a, a cartridge system, of course, so that's picking up really s uh, small particles. But I was stunned at how much crud was in my city water that I've been drinking it for years. It was a clear glass of water. I had no idea when I removed the filter that it was going to be black and brown with sludge all over it. Yep. It was really gross. So people are going to capture stuff. Now, uh, what about uh, irrigation systems or um, lawn sprinklers, that kind of thing? This is useful for that as well, right? Yeah. Anytime you're spraying water through a nozzle, if the particle is large enough to plug the nozzle, Rusco can catch that size the Rusco filter so it's smaller than what your particle is, it'll plug the nozzle and you're going to have no problem downstream plugging up the water uh, sprinkler heads or grinding up your uh, impact heads. Okay, great. So we want to do that. Um, can you explain the difference to me between a trapper system and a regular spin down system? Sure. Um, basically the heads are all the same. You've got a molded head where the water comes in, you've got a molded bar that causes the water to spin smooth screen so the sediment doesn't attach to it, water flows through here and clean water goes to the house. So all of the fil filters have the same head. On a spin down version, the screen goes all the way to the bottom, the sediment that is down here stays here It can actually come and recoat the screen on a spin down version. The trapper version, the advantage on this one, you've got a screen where the sediment comes down, the spin action stops here and the sediment is trapped in the bottom. So this is called a sediment trapper. The advantage on this one over the short version is the sediment constantly is being scoured away from the screen and gravity drops it down so it's trapped. The shorter version, the sediment that gets built up down here can actually spin back up and recoat the screen. So you're going to get better performance out of the sediment trapper version on the three quarter and the one inch. On our inch and a half and two, you've got a clear housing. The housings are the same. The difference between a sediment trapper and the spin down is a sediment trapper has a shorter screen, large storage area. On the spin down version, the screen goes all the way to the bottom. So on this one, uh, if you have a lot of sediment, you're going to have a lot more storage on this one. The larger screen actually gives you a little more surface area. You're going to get more flow rate. So on the inch and a half and two, I recommend the spin down version over the sediment trapper. You're just going to get longer performance out of the filter itself. Okay, great. And these have a flush valve built into the bottom. Uh, that's this here, yep. right? You've got a half inch uh, ball valve. Basically flush it to waste as the sediment builds up. Just uh, flush it down and then what, you can have a hose here that goes to a drain or just put a bucket underneath. Yeah, usually whatever. just a bucket. Usually they don't have that much that you need to flush it to a drain. Okay, great. Now you brought a functioning trapper system here and uh, we're going to zoom in on that so you can see it in operation. You'll actually see the cyclone action and the sediment trapping down below in the trapper. So in the spin down sediment filter, the head's molded so the water spins. This is the sediment trapper version. Centrifugal action push, pushes the sediment against the housing. Gravity drops it down, the spin action stops here and the sediment is trapped. So all you've got to do is open the valve 
and flush the sediment out. This is just a recirculating demonstration but it gives you the spin action that the RESCO provides. Now, Brad, talk to me about fittings. There are things that we do want to do and things that we don't want to do that might harm a system if we use the wrong kind of connections when we're plumbing these into a system. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah. The Ruskos come with either a one-inch glue socket on the small heads or a three-quarter female thread. Uh, on the three-quarter female thread, this is a fitting that's actually molded into the head from the factory. I had them test this, I had them put it in a freezer and then bury a steel nipple in here until you bury the fittings. Uh, these do not crack. If you take the one inch glue socket head and you put a female thread bushing in here and tighten a male nipple into here, there's a very good chance you're going to crack it because with Teflon tape it feels like it's not tight enough and you keep over tightening it. So what I recommend is take a Schedule 80 nipple, cut it in half, put the glue end in, male plastic over with a metal female, you'll have no problem with this. You can tighten this as tight as you want. You will not crack it. If you do a female pushing in here, you will crack it. Same with on the bigger filters. If you've got the inch and a half, these are glue socket fittings. If you use a slip by slip bushing, if this is a female thread bushing, putting a male nipple in here, you're going to crack the bushing probably 70% of the time, which is a big problem. You've got to take it all apart. Again, go with the slip by slip bushing with the male nipple. Male plastic, metal female. Again, you can tighten this as tight as you want. You're not going to have an issue. Just don't use a female bushing on these. And this is all Schedule 80 PVC, so it's your standard uh, primer and glue stuff Correct. that everyone knows about that has anything to do with PVC. Um, we have to be careful about cracking this valve also, right? Correct. Uh, it's a PVC female thread ball valve. It comes with Teflon tape from the factory. Uh, when you tighten this, it seals before this is physically tight. If you tighten this all the way up where it bottoms against the bottom of the housing, there's a real good chance you're going to crack this valve, and that's going to cause an issue. So, you know, just because uh, you snug it up, that's all the tighter you need to go on this. Do not over-tighten this, or you will crack that valve. So leave some threads showing. Leave a couple threads showing, otherwise you get in danger of cracking it. Correct. Okay, good. good.